and welcome to India. Oh, pardon me. Excuse me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Now we got a massive series from India coming here for you and we're starting in the biggest city, Mumbai. Home to over 23 million people and a hot spot for all types of Indian food. But today, we got something in specific planned for you. We are headed to a district tonight known for its Muslim community and is an absolute gold mine for its food. But I couldn't do it by myself. I'm meeting up with my friend Akshaya today. How are you? I'm good. If you all don't know, it's Max and my kind of beef and we're about to eat. Let's get it started. Um, the reason that we're, I mean, of course, we're here and uh, it's so popular is because of all the amazing meat dishes. Okay. Uh, they don't discriminate against any meat, in a, in a sense. So they use anything and everything and every part of that animal uh, to make it uh, as sustainable as possible. They don't throw anything away. Right. That's the idea behind a lot of food that they cook as well. Okay, so there are just a plethora of options. Where are we going to start? Uh, so we're going to start with the one right down there. It's uh, Firoz Farsan and uh, they have a really interesting dish about uh, which, which I'll tell you just just now. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's check it out. So hungry. She's in there working her way in there. Going to talk to him real quick. See if they're doing a specific dish that she wants to show us tonight. So. Fingers crossed that they have it. They have it? Yes, they have so, it. So what's yeah. the dish we're going for? Uh, so it's called, a, I think it's pronounced Patrel Biryani. So it's basically biryani without rice is what they're famous for. What? <laughs> no rice. Can you? What? That is crazy to me. I'm a rice lover, so I don't know how I feel about this. So we're going to have to get in and definitely try yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Wow. It's oh, nice for the main meal. So this is just a certain that's mixture. It that he sells right here? Yes. I must look hungry. He gave me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Let's try this out. <laughs> this puts any snack mix in America to shame. <laughs> it's just so flavor packed. <laughs> now you hear some hunger right there. So the place that's really famous for this little snacks that we just tried is actually very famous for its rice biryani. And here we got it. They were running low. They are heating up the last little bit for us. They're being super friendly. And I must say, I'm very happy. It's got my mouth just watering. But maybe because my nose is deep in the spot right now. And look what they did. This is fried potatoes, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, look at this. You want to make anything better? Just some nice, crispy fried potatoes on top of it. Good move. I like that. <laughs> what is this? Is this this cut yes. up? Yes. What is um, it? Yeah, it. So um, you can see that there's a layer of leaf around it. Uh, it's called Acacia leaf. Uh, what's filled inside it is uh, basin, uh, which is chickpea flour and a bit of uh, tamarind water that they sort of mix in it. And what they do is they steam this and then cut it up into little pieces and that's the thing that you're eating in there. <laughs> oh wow, so the chickpea tamarind mixture has been steeped with that leaf. Yes. Probably soaks in some of that flavor from the leaf as well. Oh, this is a first for me. I'm going to try to get it with a little bit of everything. From steaming those chickpeas, it is just ultra soft, ultra smooth. You really get the oil to coat it as well, so the spice and all the flavor coats your mouth. It doesn't go anywhere. You get the crunchiness from the fried potatoes and then a little bit of that umami from the meat being in there as well. Wow. That's just been cooked for hours and hours, slowly done. All those flavors have just melted and morphed into a gorgeous bite. Wow. Shukriya. Oh, thank you. Absolutely delicious. Needs more than just a thank you. Beautiful dish. I did not believe in the riceless biryani. That dish made me a believer, y'all. Ooh wee. Had spot number two. Pretty amazing look of what it looks like right now. I mean, look at this. Look what we're walking into. I feel like it's about to be something good. <laughs> <laughs> so is this still caught a tank? Uh, a part of it, yes. We're just kind of like on the outside? Yes, just uh, just right outside uh, okay. the main uh, street stop. And where are we headed right now? Uh, to this one right here. It's Jelani Fast Food. Jelani Fast Food? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to have some uh, mutton stuffed uh, beda roti. Um, 
We'll find out what it is. <laughs> oh man, let's get in here. Oh, beautiful work, beautiful craftsmanship. And there goes our stuffed roti, pouring it right there in that hot oil. Instantly bubbles up. Look at that, already getting a little brown on that one side. Look at this, look at all these air bubbles, they're just super crispy. That's just gonna be an intense crunch right there. So I love my rosies when they're nice and crispy. It's gonna give it that feeling, it's gonna be creamy and meaty. Oh. We're gonna take the opportunity to go inside and sit down. Oh, and thank goodness we took the opportunity. Came here in the AC, treating us right. Came on 16. That's not cheap to do, I know. I pay my electricity in Vietnam. I can't even make it into this first dish and they're bringing me more food already. I like this place. Now what we have here is actually the Kima Mutton Roti. Now Kima is just going to kind of mean the texture. It's a little bit like a ground. I think it's just a little bit different. Got the mutton, I said stuffed in this roti. They're doing a beautiful job on the roti because I can pull it back just a little bit and hear that crispy crackliness. Just how I love my rotis. I do not care what you stuff your roti with. If you do not cook your roti correctly, it does not matter. That's crispy, that is light. And believe it or not, after a thing of oil, and after a thing of oil, and after a thing of oil, it's not greasy. I kid you not, because they're frying at such high temperatures, it's nice, it's light, and it's crispy. Ooh, I gotta go back in for that. A lot of good stuff going on in here. Y'all do not try this at home. Oh, look at that. Slides off super easy. Look at that steam. Came right off the chargals from downstairs and you brought it off here. Ground just enough where it's nice and soft and gonna melt in your mouth, but still holds together to stay around that skewer. Just the actual charcoal aroma from this, intoxicating. Beautiful, beautiful. Great texture again, really melts in your mouth. There are a lot of spices in there. Oh my gosh, that's 50% meat, 50% spices. That is delicious. We're gonna hush hush, I'm going in for another bite. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's just falling off. Absolutely delicious, they did a phenomenal job. Super friendly, so we're on spot number three. Okay. Food that we were gonna try, uh, mm -hmm. they've actually torn that building down. Really? And um, we're not really sure if they're gonna move it somewhere, someplace else, or if they're gonna reopen it. But oh, so right yeah, now it's, it's closed, happening. closed. Like yeah. it's not even anywhere. Yes. Oh, it really sucks that place is closed down. They're supposed to do like nine to twelve gravies and just be really popular. I'm talking no menu. People come there, they know what they get. I hate that it's closed down, but that's just what happens. A lot of places around here are getting torn down and not being able to relocate or anything. So, hope they get back on their feet one day. Nobody's here to give me a hug. I'm super sad that place is closed, so I'm gonna go to the next best option. I'm about to grab some sweets before we head to the next spot. So, I told you, I was hurting, I'm sad, I need some sugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you got somewhere really special for us right now. That's right, yes. <laughs> Where are we? Um, so, we're at one of the really popular sweet shops down here in in Kara Tank Road. I think they've, they're about 60 years old. Uh, they've been there since 1938. Started with two things and now they have five cases just full of things going. You got people frying up the jelly bee right here. I mean, they are just cranking out yeah. all kinds of sweets. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And is, For it, sweets. is it still in the family? Uh, it is, yes. Um, it's, I think, the third generation right now. It's a mother son duo who run it. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> Max needs sugar. <laughs> Now this is a sweet shop, so would you look at this? I got sweets to my right, got sweets to my left, sweets in front, and even sweets behind. Wow. Do you eat these sweets every day? Yeah, man. Because I know I would. Yeah, That's I why know. I can't live in India. Delicious food and too many sweets. Oh my gosh. Tell me about it. Never 
So these are all basically based dry fruit based things. Cashew barfi. It's roasted in pyogi. Uh, that's the walnut malai. So it's basically again cream, milk and walnut. Where are you starting? Uh, I'm gonna go with the figs, I think. That I'm looks interesting. Walnut all day. Yeah, these are pretty rich. You know, the it is. is not too sweet though. I was just saying, it's not too sweet. It's actually you got think? a beautiful <laughs> texture from all that crushed up walnut in there as well. Oh, I gotta keep digging into all these. Oh, and look at this. Look at that right there. This looks almost like a true caramel sauce. So yeah, that's a conscious effort to keep the sweetness a little low. Right, but the spices are coming through. So you're getting like a spicy sweetness really with that. That's beautiful. Right, so now we got our next plate here. So these are basically all the things that you see on the plate is only made with cream, like fresh cream, milk and fresh fruit. That's it. That's it. And these are all essentially uh, the recipes coming down from my father. Secret? Uh, big secret. So I can't get one after this? Uh, can't get that secret you're recipe? You're allowed to pay me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> this one is our all-time favorite, the mango malai. It's called mango malai. Malai is cream right. in uh, Hindi. Uh, mango cream is what the English translation is. Which is made all year round. It's yeah, been a bestseller for a long time. Oh, I'm sure. Well, I know what I'm trying first. Oh wow, this is so I can't even get mine in my spoon. You're telling me how good it is. This is torture. <laughs> this is too good. This is... How much do you want for that recipe? <laughs> Y'all, that is unreal. The mango flavor comes through. It's such a nice mango flavor. Again, hit you with the sweetness, but it's not too much. And then the creaminess of it. It's creamy, yet it still has almost a slight granule of texture. It's so unique. If I was eating this as a kid, like, this is what, and I came back here, this is the first thing I would want. I think this would just <laughs> transport me back to my childhood. <laughs> Brother, I just want to shake your hand after that. That's beautiful. If you're just tuning in, we just had two huge plates of food and then they gave us this monstrosity. What is this? Okay, so uh, what you see in orange, that's the jalebi, right. the classic kind. Um, the black one right over there is mava jalebi. Uh, so mava is this uh, sweet ingredient that they use in a lot of desi sweets. Everything that you've had is like a version of mava that you have. Um, it, it's, it's a version of condensed milk. And then you have these yellow, like the big pancake looking things. Uh, those are, it's called malpua. Basically deep fried in ghee. Really, really sweet. <laughs> Probably just the way you like it. <laughs> nice and crispy. What we have here is lots of fried things in ghee topped with a condensed milk sugar syrup sauce. <laughs> and sugar syrup, separately. <laughs> Where do we start with this monstrosity? Do you get a little bit of it all or you just go for it? No, yeah. just one, thing but one at a time. One at a time. Go ahead. <laughs> Not only do you get that sweet and condensed milk sauce, but when you bite into the jelly bean, it just explodes with a sugar, sweet syrup, coats the mouth. It's really too sweet, it's too much, but it's too delicious to stop. That's just too good. Okay, we're all family, good for it. That's a small bite. Oh, that's a that's very sweet. That's very sweet, that's too small of a bite. Okay. You gotta go back in. Alright. The first one, because it's thicker, so you get more of the just sugar exploding in your mouth. Yeah. I really shouldn't like it, it's too much, but how could you not? Look at all the sauce at the bottom. Look at all that sweet and condensed milk sauce they gave us. Generosity. Welcome to India. Brother, thank you so much. I really don't know what to say. You left me speechless. You didn't bring me into your business or your shop. You brought me into your home. Treat me like family. So thank you so much. That's what we love doing. Man, special place. I'm like bouncing from sugar high right now. <laughs> I'm so sugar high. Sugar high. Uh, brother, man, I just can't make you know. That was more sweets tonight than I thought I was going to have my whole time in India. So let's go get some mutton brain. That sweet shop owner continues to be a blessing, cured my sadness with those delicious sweets, and now 
he recommended a place that's supposed to have delicious lamb brain, tongue, and kidney. So I think uh, just the idea of feeding people is so uh, deeply rooted in the society right now. It's, it's never about food, it's never about a business. It's not about making money for a lot of vendors out here that you see. So even the sweet shop that we had just been to, I mean, they were just really, really happy to share something that they had oh, created. <laughs> oh, the passion is just so obvious. Yeah. Like the lady running it, like I'd eaten a whole plate to myself and she's like, aren't you going to eat? I'm like, um, how are you? I think, oh, good, how are you? And then like what's beautiful here is where I'm staying, there's a local market and you walk through it and they won't let you pass by. They're like, sit, have yeah. some chai, have some for this. Like yeah. they want you just to sit and eat with you. They will fill you right up. Oh my <laughs> You're not allowed to leave unless you feel like your stomach's gonna explode. <laughs> the hospitality, the generosity, it's just, it's felt here so much. <laughs> what happened? Um, he shut down a month ago. <laughs> What did the people tell you though? Uh, he said uh, he was he was actually the best out here, uh, you know, selling uh, brain, goat brain basically. He was really popular, people used to come down here a lot, but I, because of some small, I think, legal reason he had to shut it down. Uh, Not missed, that long ago. We've missed so many places by that much. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's the beauty of India. There's food everywhere. So I'm about to take you to a place I went to last night that I woke up this morning in a little bit of a food hangover. I ate so much. And it's right here behind us. So, plan <laughs> E. Let's go. And have you eaten here before? Um, I've only had desserts here. You've only had desserts. Yeah. Well, your mind is about to be blown. There's going to be a little bit of a wait. Thank you. Hey boss, we're back. They remember me. <laughs> They're all like, oh, you're back. I'm like, yes, it was delicious. Of course I'm back. Sometimes life will throw its punches at you, and sometimes you just gotta learn to take the punches. Out of all the places that were closed today, it finally worked out. We were here, we had mutton brains, we have a ton of delicious dishes. We are finally about to feast. So the beauty is we had a ton of bread products we could have picked from, but we went with the roti. We felt like that was the best choice, right? Yes, just because it's really light and we can sort of get everything. Uh, we had an argument. I really fought for non, but she, she denied it. Get out of here. <laughs> I'll leave it to the expert. I'm going straight in for the mutton brain. Look at that. Nice and creamy, a little pate-like. Those oils. Cheers. Beautiful. Yeah. The creamiest texture you can get is when you eat brain. And then their spices are coming through. They're actually adding a lot of sugar. There's a lot of sweetness at first. You see a ton of oil going in there. So it's just nice, oily. Coat your mouth. It's creamy and flavor packed. Oh, they're pushing so much spice in here. Yeah, good. Approved. Wow. Yeah. And now we got the veg jackfruit here for my girl. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> that was the most convincing, it's good. That eye roll, your eyes like rolled in the back of your head. Like, it's so good. comforting. I love it. Uh, so this one is uh, Sunny Goose. It's um, basically small pieces of mutton, uh, slowly cooked and uh, in this really nice spicy gravy. And the oils also to keep it fresh. Oh look at that. That is a decadent gravy because where the brain is really spicy and flavor packed, that is just letting the mutton do the talking, oily, coat your mouth. So tender and soft. They're both really special. Well, y'all, all we can do is keep rolling with the day. And fortunately, today ended up here. This place is absolutely delicious. I'm gonna do the same thing tonight that I did last night. Eat too much. I'll catch you outside when we're done. All right, thank you so much for today. It was thank awesome. I will see you soon. All right, bye. May have not been the results we wanted, but it was still a fantastic day. I'm so glad I got to bring y'all with me. And I just wanted to give a last second shout out to a chef store. Today would not be possible without them. If you want a true local experience like we had today here in Mumbai, they've just opened a new tour. So make sure to check them out if you want a day like we had. Y'all, it's Max with My Kind of Beats. Catch you at the next video.